Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Heimlich, and on this video today, we're going to be talking about peripheral neuropathy. And basically, what are the new treatment options? Because what I've found over the years that I've been treating these conditions is that most people have no idea what their options are. They either think A, that they have to take some type of medications that have side effects or simply don't work, or B, there isn't anything they can do about it. Now, fortunately, the last several years has been more and more research about nutrition and how it might be able to help with neuro, uh, peripheral neuropathy. But you're going to see that nutrition, diet changes, vitamins alone are not enough. One of the most overlooked and misunderstood treatments options uh, is the brain. But you're going to see too, treating the brain by itself isn't enough. And that's a big myth. One big myth we got to get out of the way here is that only diabetics get neuropathy. Wrong. There are many, many different reasons for people to have peripheral neuropathy. And it boils down to two main reasons, metabolic and neurologic. And you have to treat both of those guys at the same time. And I think you probably already know what peripheral neuropathy is because you're watching this video right now. But just to make sure we're on the same page, peripheral neuropathy is a problem with the nerves that carry information to and from the brain and spinal cord. Now that's why we do a complete neurological examination on every patient who comes into our office with neuropathy. Um, just because you feel symptoms in your hands or feet, that doesn't mean that that's where the problem is. And this is a huge, gigantic misunderstanding. This is where the diagnosis and treatment of peripheral neuropathy often goes wrong, right from the beginning. Now, I didn't just take a weekend seminar on this. I've been treating patients with neuropathy since 1995. I consult with over 200, actually 300 chiropractors across the country. My postgraduate studies include continuing education that focuses on functional neurology, functional blood chemistry, autoimmune disorders. Um, I do my postgraduate education through several different areas, including the Carrick Institute, Johns Hopkins, and Harvard Medical School. I'm the author of the book on chronic health conditions. Literally, I wrote the book on chronic health conditions. So our program, which we call Peripheral Neuropathy Relief Program, is really unique. And what makes it different is most people look at peripheral neuropathy as a diabetic problem or multiple sclerosis problem. And in reality, in fact, it's a neurological and metabolic problem. And here's a great thing. It's never too late to start. It doesn't matter how long you've had the neuropathy or what the other doctors you've seen or what medications you've taken. The reason it doesn't matter is I'm going to look at you like no one else has. Let me explain our treatment philosophy to you. It's really simple. Treat the person, not the diagnosis. Now, why would I say that? Well, because a diagnosis is just a starting point. And on top of that, thousands of people are misdiagnosed. I mean, everything from migraine headaches to allergies. So we don't want to get caught up in what you call a traditional diagnosis because it's pretty much generic, actually. It doesn't really give you the information on what you're going to have to do to treat it. So like I say, OK, um, you have peripheral neuropathy. Now what? There's over about 200 reasons why you could have those, uh, those symptoms. It's not the same for everybody. It's not like a cold. You take the book off shelf, oh yeah, take antibiotics, and it goes away. It's different than that. So what we want to do is we want to be very specific, because saying you have numbness or peripheral neuropathy is generic. It doesn't give us information about what we're going to do to change it, to make it better, to get rid of it. So in our office, what we look at is the functional diagnosis, meaning we look at the regions of the brain that may not be working right. Um, let's look at other systems. We look at other systems of your body, too, and see if they're not working right um, and possibly are causing their neuropathy. So for example, I may diagnose a person with a dysfunction or decreased function of the parietal lobe. That's a lobe in the brain. Or they could have a Th1 dominant autoimmune reaction that's attacking their nerves. Or maybe they're stage 7. Uh, adrenal fatigue or exhaustion. Now these aren't words you don't have to remember, but they're words that we use because they tell us what we're going to do and how we're going to treat you. And if you do have a problem with the parietal lobe, guess what? There's things we can do to rehabilitate it, to strengthen it. So let's look at the neurological component first. I want you to think of your brain as a, a muscle, as a whole group of muscles. Uh, some can be weak and some can be strong. Our job is to find out if you have any of those weaknesses. And if so, what part of the brain? And then strengthen it up. We've got non-drug, non-surgical ways to do that. 
We've got different sections of your brain called lobes. If one section's weak, guess what? We stimulate that so it starts working like it should. That's why we do the thorough neurological examination on all of the patients. We test the central nervous system, which is a brain and spinal cord. Uh, we don't have to do MRIs, CAT scans, poke through the needles, anything like that. Instead, we're going to look at eye movements, reflexes, um, gait reflexes, muscle tone, your abilities to do things. We're going to look at cranial nerves. Um, and I can assure you, this is going to be one of the most thorough exams that you've ever had. We also may do what's called infrared video nystagoscopy, which is a big word, but essentially it has infrared cameras that we put on you, and it looks at your eyes and checks eye movements. Because I know you've heard the phrase before that um, your eyes are window to the soul. Well, in neurology, your eyes are really the window to what's going on with your brain. And there's some fantastic diagnostic things that we can do and diagnose with that uh, infrared goggles. So our approach is to ask the questions, what is the mechanism? Why is this happening? And there's no one-size-fits-all diagnosis or treatment. The treatment approach is pretty simple. Identify the area of the brain that's weak and not functioning correctly, and then strengthen it through non-drug methods. Let's understand what's going on with the parietal lobe and why it can cause peripheral neuropathy. The parietal lobe is the area of the brain that receives and processes all the signals that come in from the nerves and muscles and joints. It has a map of your entire body. There's a right and left parietal lobe. The left side has a map of your right side of the body, and the right side has a map of both sides. When the parietal lobe is functioning properly, you have a normal sensation. No numbness, no tingling, no shooting pains. But if the parietal lobe starts to weaken or slow down, then the signals don't get processed correctly. You may feel numbness, tingling, pain. Think of your parietal lobe as a, uh, like a radio. When the radio is tuned into the radio station, the music is very clear. There's no static. However, if your station's off just a little bit, you start to hear the signal gets a little fuzzy. Um, the same thing happens if your parietal lobe is not getting enough stimulation to stay tuned in. The signal gets fuzzy and you feel that numbness and tingling. Have you been checked to see if your parietal lobe is functioning correctly? I mean, the electrical imbalance between the two sides of the brain is called a functional disconnection syndrome. It's like this. The wiring's all there. It's not cut. It's just that the juice isn't running 100%. It's an electrical imbalance. Now, although this is really well documented in literature, very few doctors, practitioners, have any idea what it is or how to treat it. Uh, now, let's look at the metabolic side of neuropathy. Now, the newest research is also stating that the major cause of neuropathy is what's called an autoimmune attack against nerve tissue. It's a very complex process, but basically what's happened is your immune system attacks and destroys your own nerves and brain tissue. Do you think that your body attacking your own nerves and brain tissue can cause neuropathy? You bet it can. Have you been checked for it? The immune system attack is totally abnormal and it can trigger, be triggered by food sensitivities, viruses, infections, high amounts of insulin, high amounts of inflammation. The immune system mistakenly destroys that nerve tissue and causes the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. Now, since I just mentioned insulin, the new research also shows that abnormal blood sugar levels, diabetes, and resistance to insulin can all cause neuropathy. But here's the important thing. You do not have to be diagnosed with blood sugar problems or diabetic, okay? You don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic to have blood sugar problems. This process can go undetected for years, whether you feel it or not. And I know you're probably thinking, but my lab tests are normal. I don't have a blood sugar problem. Well, maybe, but I gotta tell you, the lab ranges for normal and abnormal are pretty much garbage. They're pretty wide. Here's how they come up with it. They take the highs and lows, they lop them off, and everything in between is called normal. That's how they do it at each location. They take out the really high and really low. But of course, that might not be normal for you. Um, and over the last 20 years, this is getting wider and wider because more and more sick people have gone and had that done. So that's why we use what's called functional blood chemistry analysis. We, much, we use much less forgiving ranges. What's functional, optimal for the body? And I tell you, we pick up a lot of problems that are missed because the lab report says it's normal. But in reality, it's not normal. 
for you.